Good morning, family, and welcome to Church at Home. Yes, we are still at it, bringing you church at the comfort of your own space and the comfort of your own home. My name is Alba Komori, and I am your host for today. Now, the Potter's House Community Church is a church where we see the whole person restored with his creator body, spirit, and soul. And we intend on doing that by winning the lost, mending the broken pieces of their lives with the help of the Holy Spirit, and equipping them for the work of the ministry as the Lord would lead us. Even though the lockdown is still happening, we are still going on with the purpose and the vision that God has given us as a church. And I am so glad, we are all so glad that you join with us every single Sunday. Now, before we start with the service, I need you to do me a big favor. I need you to invite people to church, even to, to the service that you are watching right now. Whether you're watching it live or whether you are watching the replay, I need you to, to click on that share button and share it with every person you know, share it on your stories, on your statuses, and let everyone else also be able to connect with God and enjoy church from their own space and their own home. The service is about to start, and we're, we're going to start with the Murray family leading us in a in a session of praise and worship, and we're going to end it off with Pastor Sam giving us a word from the heart of God. So please do stay with us for the for the whole service. It is only going to be 30 minutes long. So please do stay along and enjoy the service with us.
Good morning, friends and family of the Potter's House Community Church. This is another beautiful day, a day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm actually very much excited today because it's my daughter's birthday. Well, I wish I could tell you how old she's getting, but you know what they say. Ladies don't want to tell about their age, so I won't say, but we thank God she's my firstborn Daddy's little girl. She'll always remain Daddy's little girl. And um, yeah, when she was born, I couldn't help and just say, these are blessings from the Lord. Not just, I, I, I couldn't see her as one blessing, but I could see her as many blessings. And as I declared that as, a bless, as blessings from the Lord, indeed, I knew very well that her life will forever be filled with blessings. Meaning that, Whoever will try and throw a curse her way, nobody will ever succeed with that. Even myself, there's no way I can curse her. So she's, she's great blessings upon us, and we honor the Lord. And we're looking forward to great things coming from the throne room of grace upon her life. Blessings upon blessings upon blessings. Friends, let's continue with our series. Last week we spoke about declaring from a position of praying. And we saw how God said through um, Job 22, verse 27, that you will pray to him and he will answer. And David, in Psalm 116, where he said that, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He inclined his ear. He heard my voice and inclined his ear to listen. Sure, yeah, you know, whenever I think of such scriptures, my heart melts to realize how much God loves us and how much authority God has given unto us. So today we're talking about declaring from a position of faith. Now, I want us to understand what faith is. Now, I'm going to give you a very interesting uh, definition, if I was to call it, or explanation of faith. Not definition, but explanation of faith. For me, faith is confidence in Christ, confidence in who Christ is, confidence in God, to be confident in who he is, you know. Um, when we look at Mark 11, verse 22, our Lord Jesus Christ replied, have faith in God constantly, not regularly, not often, but constantly. Let it be a constant thing. That you have faith in God. Trust him. Have that constant faith in God. And then once you have that constant faith in God. Listen to what he then later says. I assure you and most solemnly say to you. Whoever says to this mountain. Be lifted and thrown into the sea. And does not doubt in his heart. In God's unlimited power but believes that what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him in accordance with God's will. Ooh, this verse is so rich. I assure you, and most solemnly, remember I said this last week, I said, when God says, verily, verily, I say unto you, and these are the words that Christ likes saying, when he's about to say something very important and critical, he would say, I promise you, I tell you, I tell you, I promise. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whoever says, now you should listen to the word. He does not say whoever prays to this mountain, but he says whoever says to this mountain, you are faced with a mountain, a mountain of sickness, a mountain of poverty, a mountain of stress, a mountain of depression, a mountain of confusion, a mountain of distress. But whoever says to this mountain, now let me tell you something. It is not your pastor that is going to get rid of that mountain. It is not your husband. It is not your wife. It is not your children. It is nobody. It is not your psychiatrist that, will, that is ever going to deal with that mountain either. You will have to speak to that mountain because you are part, because you are part of whoever. I am whoever. You are whoever. And whoever says to this mountain, you have a mountain in your life. There is a mountain that is standing in front of you. And whoever says to this mountain, not to any other mountain, but to the mountain that's standing in front of you. So if you're not going to say to that mountain, that mountain is going to say. 
is going to stay there. Now, it means that you have a responsibility. And you know what? This is calling for stubborn faith. The kind of stubborn faith that would say to the to a mountain, you know what, mountain? I have faith in my God constantly. And let me tell you, this is what my faith, faith in my God says. This faith in me tells me this, that mountain, if I don't make you around you, if I don't make it around you on my left, I'm going to make it around you on my right. And if I'm not going to make it around you on my right, I'm going to have to climb you and make it over you. And mountain, if I don't make it over you, guess what? I'll have to come under you and make it work. I've got my promises on the other side. I've got to go there. And mountain, if I can't make it under you, let me tell you, mountain, get out of my way. Be removed and be thrown over. I say, and then now he continues, says, once you've said that and you do not doubt in your heart, what is it that you don't doubt? You don't doubt in your heart in God's unlimited power. So you see, the confidence that you have when you speak to a mountain, you're speaking it from a point of faith, constant faith in God, in God's unlimited power. You know very well that in God's unlimited power is totally dependent on your speaking. You see, God has got power, but you have the authority. God cannot do anything without you, but you cannot do anything without God as well. So you've got the authority. He's got the power. He's given you. He said, I will give you the keys. That's what Christ said. And then you need to speak to the mountain, not doubting in God's unlimited power, but believes that what he says. Now, you see, you don't believe in what you believe, but you believe in what you say. You don't believe in what you wish. And you don't believe in what you hope for, but you believe in what you say. You've got to speak to the mountain. You can be in front of the mountain and believe in God and have faith in God, but your faith is useless until you speak. The book of James says, show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by my works. So you've got to speak to the mountain. When you speak to the mountain and I see that mountain removed and thrown into the sea. Whoa, into the sea. You are living in land far away from the sea, but the mountain is so scared of you that when you speak, this humongous mountain flies or is thrown over by the power of your words or the power of the word that you speak. Because you see, there are angels, mighty ones of God, that are heeding the voice of his word. Vo the voice that's given to his word by you. When you speak the word and you say, by the stripes of Jesus, I have been made whole. Sickness disappear. The angels will have to uproot that sickness from you and throw it into the sea. You are in Bloemfontein, you are in Pretoria. Guess how far the, the Devon Sea is? Guess how far the East London Sea is? Guess how far is Cape Town? But the sickness will be thrown so far into the sea. Believe with confident trust. Hey. But Let's listen to this. You need to believe that whatever you say is going to take place. It does not say believe that whatever you say, you're going to do it. But it's going to take place. As to how it takes place, it's not your problem. It's not your responsibility. You speak and the system, the, the divine system will just roll out. Everybody, the angels will start doing their work. You, remember, don't you remember that Paul said to us, don't you know that you are going to judge angels? Now, let me tell you something about judges. A judge, you'd, you'd meet this simple, tiny lady with dreadlocks, uh, walking in a mall, pushing her trolley, doing grocery, and you wouldn't even know that she's a judge. But the moment she walks into the chambers as a judge, and she starts speaking, you know what? When she declares her judgment, she doesn't have to come down and cause the system to operate. She doesn't have to come down and process the prisoner that she has just judged. No, she knows that as soon as she, she passes her judgment, the system rolls out. The prison waters 
take the prisoner and they take a, take him or her through the whole processing and they start giving the prisoner the overalls and all that and all that. The system was, and at that time, the judge that has made the declaration is long gone and he's with her family or he's with his family. So you are the judges. So you believe that whatever you say will take place. It will be done for you. That's what they will do. It says, it will be done for you. Just like in the book of Job 22, 28, it says that you will decide a thing and you will declare it. And after declaring it, it shall be established for you. It will be done for you. So this matter again has been established by two witnesses. And this is Christ speaking as well. Now, it will be done for him in accordance with God's will. Ah, ah. And then just for interest, as I, as I, I throw in this bowl, for this reason I'm telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance with God's will, believe with confident trust that you have received them. Now, it says you have received them. Not you will receive them, but you have received them, and they will be given to you. Ah, uh, there's a lot of done deals here that are just waiting for you. Firstly, you need to know that as you have in this bundle of keys, which key are you using for what and how do you use that key? Now, we're talking today about declaring from a position of faith, being confident in God. You see, first. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 says that this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And as we know that he hears us, we know that we have already received that which we ask of him. I love this scripture so much that I could actually just quote it of head. And this is a constant reminder for me. Let me read it in the Amplified Version again. This is the... Oh, gosh. This is, this is just... Woman, my heart up. It says, This is the remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to. You know, if, 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 if ever there's been a time when you have to be feeling, or not just feeling like, but living as entitled, this is it. We are entitled as believers to have before God this remarkable degree of confidence. And this remarkable degree of confidence is that if we ask anything according to his will, so we need to know his will. And what is God's will? God's will is God's word. God's will is God's principles. God's will is written right in the Bible. Once you know his will, and then you come, then you can be confident when you come to him. Then you will have this remarkable degree of confidence. That is entitlement. If ever we're talking about entitlement, we have been missing our entitlement and running after some foreign things, thinking that those are our entitlement. Our entitlement is in this one, that if we ask anything according to God's will, that is consistent with his plan and purpose, he hears us. Entitlement is that God hears us. I know I'm entitled, and my entitlement is that if anybody says pray, do you know that your God, can, can you confidently say that your God, yes, I'm entitled to say that. My God hears me. I'm entitled. And if we know, ha, ha, listen, listen, and if we know for a fact, as indeed we do, uh, if we know for a fact, as indeed we do, you sound like you're being arrogant. But indeed, God is giving us the permission to be arrogant here. And so that we, we should say, if we know, not that if we believe. Now, we don't only, we've gone beyond believing, but we know for a fact, as indeed we do, that he hears and listens to us in whatever we ask. Ooh, we know for a fact that he listens to us in whatever we ask. We also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted to us the request which we have asked from him. Whew, I wish the explanation that I'm trying to bring forth, I, I could just pour my heart onto you and you would get the heart of this. This is such a powerful confidence 
that could, that you could ever have. And you know, once you have this kind of confidence, then you'll be able to speak like David. You see, when David got into the battlefield, and when, when he went to visit his, his brothers, I mean, a little boy of 17, 18, 16, 17, 18, you, you brought food for his brothers who were, giant, who were strong men and all that. And then, then he found that his brothers, that are, that are supposed to be his heroes, are scared of this man that's busy blasphemy. And we looked at him, he said, okay, so this guy thinks that he's a giant and thinks that he can... Then he said to his brother, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And he said, what? Are you saying I'm an uncircumcised Philistine or whatever? And then, you know, he just... David was able to can confidently confront the giant. Because he knew his God. He had confidence in his God. He has seen his God in action. And if you have seen your God in action, guess what? You will not be afraid of any enemy. You will not be afraid of any situation. You will not be afraid. You will not be threatened. You will not be intimidated by anything that comes your way. Then if you will not be threatened, then David made a declaration. And when he made a declaration, just like I said, the angels of God, they are, are there to heed the voice of his word. When David made a declaration, they said, you know what, I come to you in the name of my God, of Jehovah. And as I come to you in the name of Jehovah, let me tell you something. I'm going to cut off your head and I will feed you to the, to, to, to the animals. He made a declaration and having made a declaration, guess what, the angel of the Lord the angels of the Lord started operating and working on his behalf there. Because they're invisible, they cannot be seen. Goliath didn't see what came his way. A little rock that landed on his forehead became a, a little stone that landed on his forehead became a humongous rock that crushed his whole life and he fell down to the ground and died. So that very situation, once you get to have confident trust in your God and get to know who he is, because the Bible says in the book of Daniel 11, 32, the people that know their God will do mighty exploits. So once you can get to know your God, you will do mighty exploits and you will start declaring. You will, you will start speaking to your situation and say, you know what? I shall not die, but I shall live to declare the praise of my God. I shall not be destroyed by this. I will never die poor. My children shall never die poor. I will not settle for this poverty. Do not agree with this terrible situation that you're going through, but start speaking against it and start speaking above it, start rising above it because it is the promise of God for you as God's child. Now, I want us to quickly look at Mark, um, Luke chapter 17 actually, uh, because this is a very interesting scripture that I want to finish with. Um, Luke 17, I hope. Yes. Now, like I said, faith is the confidence you have in Christ. Of course, then lack of faith is the lack of confidence that you have in Christ. When you look at 17, verse 5 to 6, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith, our ability to confidently trust in God and in his power. And the Lord said, if you have confident abiding faith in God, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, which has very strong roots, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea. And if the request was in agreement with the will of God, it would have obeyed you. It would have obeyed you. The Lord said, oh, nah. that situation would have, would have long obeyed you. You're seated with the situation that is supposed to have long obeyed you. But you, because you didn't have that faith, even as a small as a master, you see, the apostles misunderstood. They thought when they said increase our faith, they needed a humongous faith to deal with situations. But you see, Christ brought to them a very important understanding. He said, you know what? Faith is built up. You increase your own faith. You build up on your faith. Every time you activate your faith, every time you use your faith, the more it increases, the more it increases. Because this is what happens. God, Christ is comparing faith like a mustard seed. A mustard seed is the smallest of the herbs. It's the smallest of the spices, seeds, that you could ever think. There's a lot of different spices and different seeds that make spices. But the mustard seed is the smallest. And yet the mustard seed being the smallest. Out of all the uh, spices, when you were to plant all these different seeds, even the bigger ones, bigger than the, the mustard seed, when they start growing, this, the mustard tree 
becomes way bigger than any of all these different kind of seeds. So that's exactly how faith operates. Faith seemingly so small, when you start working on it, it grows so big and bigger than any mountain that it becomes so strong that when you say to a mulberry tree which has very strong roots, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea. Oh, there comes Christ again. There goes Christ again saying that things should be thrown into the sea. From inland into the sea. And if the request was in agreement with the will of God, it would have long obeyed you. I love the way Christ puts it. He doesn't say it will obey. He says, it will. if only you had known, you could have long dealt with this situation. If only you had known, you wouldn't be stressing as you're stressing. If only you had known, you wouldn't be suffering as you're suffering. But what you need to do is that you've always been having faith. And as a matter of fact, everybody has got faith. And that faith is as small as a mustard seed. But the problem is that you have not started activating. You have not started acting on that seed. You have not started working on that seed. You have not started implementing that faith. You have not started taking that first step from your faith. Now it's time that once you, you take that step, then you can start speaking to your mulberry trees whose roots are deeply rooted. And then you can say to them, I don't have time to uproot your roots. When a mulberry tree, make sure that you pull your roots out. Make sure that as you leave, you don't leave your roots behind. You take out all of your roots. You see, this is a beautiful thing. Christ does not say you will pull the mulberry tree's roots out. He says, the, the mulberry will pull its own roots up. You say, be pulled up by the roots and be planted. If it's not going to pull itself up, guess what? It, the whole thing will be done by angels and, and God himself. As to how God is going to do it, it shouldn't be your problem. But then you need to be acting upon your faith. Have a blessed week. And may the Lord our God continue blessing and empowering you as you exercise your faith and start declaring from a point of faith. God bless you. Thank you so much for staying for the whole service. I do hope that you enjoyed each and every part of the service and that you were able to connect with God. Now, if you wanted to watch the service again or if you wanted to watch our previous services, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to like our Facebook page as well and, and to follow us on Instagram as well to keep up with us. If you want to be more involved with the thing that we are doing during lockdown, please do send us an inbox or a message and you can also join our prayer chain group that we're having every day. We are, we are praying for our country and for Africa and for the world. So please do send us a message if you're interested in that. Thank you so much for joining us and I pray that you have a great week ahead.